Good morning ladies and gents, uh, welcome to another video and this week it's a final review and it's one that kind of slipped through the net it's a product I've had a while, quite a while in fact and I've got an absolute stack load of shaves out of it so far um, but perusing through my spreadsheet and uh, my channel I realised I haven't done a full review of this soap um, so I thought to myself well let's get it out of the way this weekend um, because it's been a very crazy few months at work um, so things have slipped my mind um, so yeah the soap is the fine snake bite and uh, yeah I thought it's time just to finish this uh, particular chapter off so it's a fairly hard soap that doesn't come with its own bowl just comes as a puck wrapped in paper inside its little cardboard box so I gave it a home in a little plastic tub. Um, nothing fancy, it saved it going in the recycling bin. It actually started life as a pot of a sweet and sour sauce from a Chinese takeaway. And I thought, well, so it's going to landfill or some other plastic bottle use later in its life. I thought it'll, uh, it'll last a bit longer in its current form. And uh, like I say, it's a, a good waterproof tub, keeps it dry. Happy days. So, onto the shave itself. What we're going to be doing? Well, we're going to be having fine soap, we're going to be using the Mercury of Future, and we're going to be using an Astra Blade in that, uh, Superior Stainless. It's about 10 shaves old now, and um, so it's probably the last shave on this blade. And we're going to be using the Razor Rock Monster 26mm Synthetic Brush. So, hopefully you've had a good week, and uh, we're going to enjoy a good shave. Let's get started. So, I've already uh, given my face a hot towel and we're going to build up a bit of a, a lather just to get everything going, you know, stimulate beard growth, get, get the, uh, the skin ready for the shave. So, I don't bloom this soap, it's not necessary because it's, it's easy to lather, very, very easy to lather. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to knock as much of the water out of this brush as possible because it does hold a lot and it releases it in a slightly messy way. It's not not great in that sense. I'd rather add the water to it and away we go. So we have the soap, we have the brush. And like I said, it doesn't take a lot to lather. 30 seconds or so should give me adequate soap in the brush ready for a full shave, and by full shave I mean three passes, there we go, plenty in there, so doesn't look it necessarily, but there's enough. Just going to wet my face, add a couple of drops to the brush, not a lot, and start building. And when lathering with drier brush, it takes a little bit more effort, but I find it's worth it just for the less mess. So it'll be very thick and pasty. And we'll thin it out as we go. And already the menthol, I can feel it in the old eyes. I've been bleary-eyed enough this uh, this weekend. As uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday was the 37th annual Stoke Beer and Cider Festival, and I thought it'd be rude not to go. So uh, my colleague and friend went to, went on Friday afternoon. There's something like 150 beers and a good bunch of ciders and other other drinks on offer and uh, I tried a good few thankfully didn't really find any duds there was a couple that were there were good beers don't get me wrong but not my particular taste if I 
those who like a light ale that's really easy to drink they would probably have loved this particular beer my favourite one of the of the bunch that I tried I tried 14 sips of one or two others that were quite nice and uh, <clears throat> it was from a, a company in Liverpool uh, it's called the Liverpool Organic Brewery and the beer was called Beerhead and beer spelled B-I-E-R and the uh, the flavours were superb it's floral spicy lovely bitter finish to it it was beautiful there's a couple of really nice smoky uh, porters in there that were very much worth a try as well it's from the Beowulf Brewery Finn's Hall Porter was the name, that was absolutely stunning. It's one that you'd want to finish a night on because it's very heavy. Good winter warmer, that one. And another one of a similar, similar ilk that was a Mustang V8. That was, again, another smoky, darker ale. So you can see from the short lather, we've got stacks of lather. That's a short load, we've got stacks of lather, should I say. We've got loads left in the brush for the next two passes. So, so we've got two days growth to mow down today. And apologies for the lighting, it's a bit getting dull. And uh, I can't quite get the lighting right today, so you'll have to bear with me. And uh, <coughs> so there's the razor and the blade. So we're set on a five for the first pass, and let's see. Lovely. It's nice and slick. And as you may or may not be able to tell, looking at the lather, it's heavily cushioning as well. And above all else, it's cold. It's nice and cold. If you uh, if you like them on the chilly side, if you just want to a refreshing wake up in the morning. has to be on your list. So yeah, so like I say, it's been a crazy, a crazy couple of weeks. Well, I'm very, very busy. Very exciting because uh, there's been an element of change. Now, sometimes change can be scary, and believe you me, at first the changes that were happening were very scary, but if you can look but the bigger picture and understand the reason for change, it makes sense. You could get the reasoning behind the change, even if it wasn't the best kind of way of achieving the goal. And by that I mean someone's got to suffer. Um, sadly, that happened, but we're starting to see the fruits of that change. Uh, the people who uh, were affected by the change. Lots of them I've spoken to have gone on to bigger and better things, arguably. Uh, which means the rest of us, we've got uh, some, we've had some interesting times. 
and one of those changes um, has been my boss, a fantastic lady Mandy, um, she was kind of, we would say cajoled, um, offered another opportunity in our, in our company and uh, admittedly the role almost seemed like tailor made for it, she was absolutely perfect for it which left an opening and uh, I got offered that opening so next week I'm, uh, I'm the manager of our department and uh, yeah it's going to be some interesting challenges ahead that's what I'm looking forward to, I like a challenge so it's a whole different set of tasks for me to deal with new problems Some of which was familiar as my role as a senior anyway. Um, but it's going to be good fun, I think. Like I say, some stressful nights ahead, I see. But I do like a good challenge. I do. I thrive on challenges. So, speaking of challenges, that first pass was no challenge to, uh, to the murky of future on setting number five, like so. Five. However, don't need to go that heavy for passes two and three, so we dial it back to a two. And that's more than enough. For the across. And against the grain passes. And this soap gives great glide, which for me, going against the grain for the next pass is essential. And uh, there's nothing worse than on sensitive skin having the razor skipping and jumping. worse than that, it catches. And end up bleeding. And where possible I like to uh, avoid that. So, <coughs> I guess so, uh, the other challenge <coughs> that I've uh, set myself this year since the beer festival was um, I joined the camera. Now it's something I've I've been meaning to do for years, never got round to doing. I thought when in Rome I'm at a beer festival, camera they were there recruiting, and they actually recruited one of our local MPs as well. Um, so good on them. And hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll get to meet him down at a few uh, a few sessions of camera meetings and whatnot, and uh, chew the fat politically and over beer. Um, so yes, so I've made it my aim to uh, to try out a few small independent pubs in the area and uh, try out a few new beers along with the way. So uh, if anyone's out and about in Stoke-on-Trent and uh, knows of a few good pubs, let me know. Obviously the Good Beer Guide um, will give me many choices, but it doesn't cover everything. There might be a few hidden gems that we don't know about that uh, you could perhaps let me know. So, pass number three. As you can see, we've still got a brush full of lather, and uh, it's not, it gets colder with every pass. And one thing I love about the fine soap is that the lather is stable all the way. You really got to try hard to make a bad lather. I'm not suggesting it's impossible, but I've, I've yet to do it. I get up on, at five o'clock in the morning on weekdays, and uh, at that time of day, no one's really at their most perky and, and their best, and uh, even then I can't create a bad lather with it. So, there we go. Really easy to lather. One of the top 
top leather is in that sense. It's so easy to build a consistently good leather. Some, sometimes some soaps you can get an okay leather with minimal effort, but this one is a good leather every time. So, bonus points there. <clears throat> so here we go for the final against the grain pass. Zero pressure, because this is my awkward spots. So it's a fantastic soap this, it's, uh, it's consistency is what really, really sets it sort of up there. really up there for me is consistency. There we go. Three passes completely drama free. And close. Good close show. Fine shave, you could say. <clears throat> so, to summarise, it's a very, very cold soap. If you don't like the, the intense menthol hit, you're not going to like it. <clears throat> if you do, it's going to be right up your alley. Um, if you want a slick soap, this is one to reach for. It's not what you would call excessive glide. It's not what you'd call just about enough glide. It's a bit beyond that. There's, you're not found wanting would probably be the best way for me to put it and uh, <clears throat> excuse me for me it's essential to have enough glide and it's cushioning I have no qualms about using that soap with a fairly mild razor like the the future um, even on setting six it, it presents sufficient cushion to not give me any grief whatsoever with the R41 and the feather blade again it works perfectly well I don't feel any point that I'm at risk um, providing I follow the usual kind of mantra of no pressure be sensible and respect the razor post shave on a fine soap is good as well it's not the best I've got um, but take that with a pinch of salt because everyone's skin is different and we all react differently to different soaps but uh, if you find similar experiences as me with the other soaps that I review you'll probably sort of be in the same sort of ballpark here I don't feel dry in any way I don't feel taut I don't feel irritated or anything like that I feel good after a shave I don't feel the need for any balms or anything like that but there's just not that little extra icing on the cake sort of Wow, I feel like I've been moisturised. It's more than acceptable and uh, I would not knock it down. It still scores very, very highly in my, in my ratings in that sense. And as you know, post shave is one of the most important bits for me. Scent. Well, there's not an awful lot of scent to it. It's minty and it's menthol. One could argue they are pretty much the same thing. Um, there's no soapy base smell to it. There's nothing outside of what you expect, the mint and menthol. So if you like a minty, you're gonna like it. Price-wise, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. Um, if, from memory, it's, about, it's somewhere between 11 and 14 pounds uh, for a puck. Um, the downside is you have to get your own pot. It's not a big downside, because most of us have got pots kicking around. You can pick them up cheaply enough from the likes of Ikea, if you want a little metal tin, or like myself, if, you've, uh, if you frequent the occasional Chinese takeaway, and you have those little plastic pots from the sweet and sour sauce or whatever, use one. It saves you going in the recycling or the waste. So, yeah, fine do now actually make their own little stackable 
ceramic pots for you to put the soap pots in. Um, I haven't picked one up yet because they don't come with a lid. But if you have more than one, like I say, you can stack them up and uh, the top pot becomes the lid for the bottom pot and so on and so forth. So, I think I've covered everything there. So I'm going to let you go. I'm going to go shopping, grab some bits for a nice Sunday roast, because it is Sunday. I'm going to uh, go upload the video, get that done. Otherwise, me standing here, waffling aimlessly into a camera would have been entirely for nothing. So ladies and gents, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed um, the little bit of a final review of the fine snake bite. Hopefully you find it interesting and helpful. If there's any questions you've got, by all means pop them in the comments below. Um, I'll do my very best to help you out there. Uh, so thank you again. This has been the Fine Snake Bite. I've been Nick, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.